Hello, everyone. So I'm sure many of us have been following closely how the Ukraine crisis progresses. But what's really shocking is this unprecedented level of cancel culture, not just targeting Russians, but also targeting Americans. And my guest today is also among the people who have been forced to stay silent. His name is Lee Kemp. I'm sure many of you know him. He's a comedian. He's the host of Redacted Tonight that used to be a program on RT America. And I was lucky enough to be invited to appear on one of the episodes on his show and this episode is still available on my channel so feel free to check it but now let's hear what Lee got to say so Lee welcome thanks for having me it's really shocking that how fast things moving uh, first the RT America was shut down and uh, all this uh, Russian media were, were banned across Europe and then all these uh, hosts reporters the work for RT America being labeled your show has been taken down on YouTube completely and Spotify as well. I mean, did anyone tell you, give you some notices, give you some warnings, tell you which regulations or rules you violated? Did anyone tell you that? No, no, that's that's not how it works for big tech platforms. They don't they don't care to warn you that your entire existence is going to be erased. Um, yeah, t coming up on two weeks ago, RT America didn't give us a reason, but they just said we're shutting down and they told all the employees it's over after I think close to 15 years. I was there for eight years and 375 episodes redacted tonight. And, you know, within a day or two of that, uh, YouTube banned uh, all redacted tonight videos globally. Um, if you go to our page, it just says banned in your country. And uh, Spotify removed my uh, my pot, my personal podcast moment of clarity uh, from their platform. And none of this had any warning or any uh, suggestion that it was going to happen. Uh, it, it really is a new level of censorship in America. It's basically you don't know what you did or or whether you really violated any rule on this social network. It just all this work you've been doing for 80 years just completely wiped out from the social networks. Yeah, eight years of work just deleted. And yeah, there, there's no warning. There's no real. Uh, uh, eventually, YouTube gave a statement to some media outlets saying that it was because our, they, they delete channels that are or ban channels that uh, diminish violence or in, or encourage violence or something like that, which is, of course, hilarious because American media's entire job is to diminish or cover up the violence of our endless wars overseas. Uh, you know, the latest estimates are that six million people have died from America's war on terror, which involves, you know, wars and bombing in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, uh, Syria. Uh, it, it's just Yemen. It's just endless. And that's our media's job is to cover all that up, act like it's not happening. I mean, they barely ever mention Yemen, which is going on right now. And that's their job. Yet YouTube has no problem uh, platforming and, and facilitating really the, those messages. So it really is hilarious, uh, you know. And on top of that, I, I had said on my show that I was opposed to Putin's invasion, uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But I also gave the context of the situation like, you know, NATO has surrounded Russia. They've been encroaching for years. They've the U.S. has sent missiles and money to Ukraine, had created a coup there in 2014 to put in a U.S. favorable government. And so, you know, you can note context and also be opposed to war. I think probably people are going to accuse you as the useful tool of, of Russia because you work for the Russia's uh, propaganda machine. So everything you say is just Russia's uh, propaganda. Uh, did anyone from the Russian government ever tell you, OK, they say this, say that? Or did they ever tell you what to do in your show? Right. That, that's what Americans and American media want to believe is that we were given talking points or told what to say. But I through my entire eight years there, I was never told what to say. I was never censored. Uh, I wrote every word I said myself. So I was writing and researching and deciding on all my topics. And that's, you know, different than almost every comedy TV, comedy news TV show, at least in America. I don't know about other countries, but uh, most of those people do not write their own words. So I really had something 
else going there and it, it was immensely free. And that's why I was on that channel in, a, in the United States. There are no channels uh, uh, television where you're allowed to be anti-war and anti-imperialist. And I have been since before I joined RT America. So uh, it was the only channel where I was allowed to do that. And there's very, there, there were several other well-known uh, anti-war and, and uh, you know, anti-capitalist uh, uh, figures there at RT America, like the uh, famed author, Pulitzer Prize winner, Chris Hedges, and the former governor and former wrestling star, uh, Jesse Ventura. Uh, they were both at RT America as well because they were not allowed to be on other networks simply because they were opposed to America's wars. So basically you're saying only Russian media is giving you the freedom of speech to say whatever you want. <laughs> That's very ironic. <laughs> your podcast on Spotify being removed, your, your channel being closed. But isn't freedom of speech, freedom of press is being guaranteed by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution? Yeah, the, the U.S. Constitution is very proud of a lot of what we call loopholes. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of little you know, it's an old document that's been eaten by moths. So there's a lot of little holes in it uh, that, that you can go through. So our, our government really works around and, and government, along with corporations, work around these tenants, these ideas of freedom of speech and freedom of press. Uh, you know, they claim that this doesn't count as as shutting down voices because it's a tech platform and it's a corporation and they get to do what they want. And so they say, well, that's allowed. We get to do what we want. We can ban anyone we want. Uh, and, you know, the U.S. government sanctions that shut down a, a media network, they they claim that that doesn't count as violating freedom of press. Uh, but of course, the United States is responsible for jailing one of the most famous journalists, publishers in the world, Julian Assange, for, you know, 10 years, really, he's been confined. And and just the other day, his uh, extradition to America to basically be tortured for the rest of his life has gone forward. Uh, it could happen. And the U.S. keeps pushing for it. So as long as we're imprisoning people like Julian Assange and shutting down media networks, then the U.S. has no claim of freedom of press. And also during this uh, war, I also looked back into what media was uh, was saying during the Iraq war uh, and during the war in Afghanistan. And you see completely different narratives, right? So in 20, 2003, the issue of the cover of Economist and the cover next to the George W. Bush, it says the waging of peace. We look at how, how much <laughs> destruction that the war brought to Iraq and the media was completely saying different thing. And it's always the other countries are the big villain, the big dictatorship that we need to go to the war. When we do the war, when the United States do the war, it's the wage of peace, it's, it's heart rendering, rending, but necessary war. I mean, <laughs> it's just... I mean, that's I think that's very dangerous. But what do you what do you make of this like completely double standards of covering when it's different people waging the war? Yeah, I, I, oh, absolute double standards. Uh, the U.S., you know, manufactures consent for our bombing. But then when other people bomb, it's a tragedy. Now, I think all bombings a tragedy, but we never act like American bombing is tragedy. Um, and like I mentioned, Yemen, 377,000 people have died in Yemen uh, with Saudi Arabia using our bombs, using American bombs and using American uh, uh, military technology to cut off food and create a famine in that country. And so we are killing children in Yemen right now. And you don't see them across our television screens 24 um, seven. So it really is a double standard. And then, you know, speaking of you, you went back and looked at the coverage going into Iraq, the number of times I, I covered this on my other podcast, Government Secrets, uh, the number of times that the Americans have been lied into war is really a long list. I mean, if you go through it, we were we were lied into Vietnam. We were lied into Iraq with weapons of mass destruction that somehow were never there. We were lied into Syria with false claims of chemical weapons. We were lied into uh, uh, Libya. You know, there were ridiculous claims with Libya. We were lied into uh, each war we've been in. It's kind of just a, a ridiculous lies that eventually fall apart and the, even the mainstream media admits that they weren't true eventually but they, it's too late it's it's 
they, they know that the propaganda served its purpose. So even though they admit later, oh, it turns out that, uh, you know, that uh, Saddam Hussein didn't have WMD, it's years later and it's meaningless. It is long long after the propaganda has been useful. Because you criticize the United States, the government, a lot. And people are probably going to argue that's why you're hired by RT, because you hate the United States or whatever. Do you feel yourself being used by the Russians' propaganda machine? No. Oh, I feel like I'm revealing the truth and and I don't I don't hate the country of America. I hate the way we behave. I hate the the idea that we need to have 900 military bases and spend a trillion dollars a year on military. Uh, I that's what I hate. I hate that. I hate the I hate the sociopaths at the top of our government who are doing this bombing and think it's fine. Uh, you know, famously, Madeleine Albright, uh, former head of, of our government, uh, said that killing 500,000 Iraqi children with economic sanctions was uh, worth it, was OK. And that's how they view things. And it's that type of behavior that I hate. And I don't feel that, you know, I'm, I'm no longer with RT America. Now I'm just patreon.com slash Lee Camp. That's my whole that's my whole presence um, online. But when I was there, I didn't feel like I was being used by uh Russia, I felt like I, I was using the only outlet that would let me be free and speak my mind and be uncensored. And I was using that to get the truth out there. And I, I didn't feel used at all. I felt like I was taking advantage of a very rare opportunity opportunity on American television airwaves. Do you and other your former colleagues get attacked or abused at the online or were in, in real life? Because I do see a lot of hateful comments. How can people just become trolls on the internet and attacking you guys who basically just speaking what you believe, speaking the truth. So th did any of you get attacked? No, no I, never I never did. I a couple of times someone yelled something at me in public, uh, but uh, former colleagues that I was good friends with uh, had some people, you know, stalk them and and real, you know, send them real threats that were worrisome. Um, and yeah, this that type of anger, that type of hate, hatred was largely created by our mainstream media, by our corporate media airwaves. They told Americans that you should, you know, basically want anyone who uh, who works at RT or is uh, somehow distantly connected to Russia, you should want to harm them. You should hate them. And it really is just a, a level of toxic nationalism that's disgusting and repulsive. And we're in a time right now where we need to work together as countries, as people. Uh, you know, we got to deal with climate change. We got to deal with environmental collapse. These are things we should all be working together on. And they're existential threats to humans. And that should be our priority, not this hatred because someone was born in another country behind, you know, on the other side of a border. It, really, we got to we got to evolve past that and stop acting like, uh, you know, apes. OK, thank you so much, Lee. You do have some fan base here in China, too. So looking forward that one day we will see some shows in China.